Even though I launched Project Whoop, there's still a few products that I was sent to review on this channel. It would not be fair for me to review it on another channel. Today we are looking at the $160 mini PC. Roll the sponsor intro. Oh yeah, we, we have nobody. This is the Z83F fanless PC. Let's roll the unboxing. This is it. I thought it would be the size of this box. This is a Pixel 2 XL, all right? This is tiny. In the box, we get the power cable, HDMI cable, the massive and very heavy PC. It's not, it's, it's very light. Quick guide and a thank you for purchasing this PC. In this little box, we have Intel CPU up to 1.9 gigahertz, integrated Intel HD, which supports 4K. This is a 4K monitor, three gigs of DDR3 RAM and 32 gigabytes hard drive. It does have an SD card slot, which you can use for an SD card reader, or you can expand the hard drive all the way up to 128 gigs. It has an HDMI and VGA, meaning you can set up two monitors, one USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, ethernet port, built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and a headphone jack somewhere. All of that is in this little box. Obviously, this is not meant for gaming. I didn't even bother installing video games because let me give you an example. I'm gonna launch Agario. This should give you a good idea of how this PC handles. Um, it's kind of frozen at the moment. There you go, we're moving. While this is playable, uh, I wouldn't say that it's playable playable. Even this game is telling me that your computer is running slow. From my research and experimenting, this PC is made for two things. Media playback, it's the biggest one, and some people use it for just simple web surfing and email. Media playback is what most people are gonna use this for. Take an HDMI cable, run it to your TV or monitor, get a wireless keyboard, get in bed, and just watch TV shows and movies. A lot of the new TVs nowadays are smart TVs, meaning they're gonna come with Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and so on. But even those have their limitation. This, because it's running Windows, technically you will not have those limitations. First, we're going to look at a 4K video that I recorded of my dog with my phone, 4K, 30 FPS. I'm just going to double click on the video. It's 200 megabytes. You can see that the video is opening up. I can double click and watch it. Once it's playing back, it doesn't really have much delay, but if I click somewhere, you'll see that it is a little choppy up until it starts rolling. Now we're gonna open a YouTube video running in 4K. The video should be playing smooth, but as you can see, it's quite laggy. Um, even exiting out of full screen here, it's not even letting me out. There it goes. 1080p is probably the best way to watch this. If you wanna scroll through the video, you basically have to click somewhere and let it go for a little bit because there will be a little bit of choppiness and slowing down. Now we're gonna take a look at Netflix. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling through these thumbnails, as they load up, they take a little bit. I've been catching up on The Office and you can see that once I click somewhere, the video is choppy for a little bit right when it starts, but after it gets rolling, it doesn't have any of that choppiness. We're also gonna run a 60 FPS YouTube video. Here we have a video, well, it was running, now it's sort of loading here, so it's attempting to run in 60 FPS. It does seem like, yep, it does seem like it's quite choppy from time to time, but for the most part, once it gets rolling for a while, it doesn't have any issues. So as long as you're not going through videos nonstop, this shouldn't be the end of the world. I've looked through a bunch of reviews on Amazon to try to figure out what most people use this for, and most of the people use it for media playback. A few people even use it for their business PC. As a PC, if you keep your tasks simple and you don't mind waiting a little bit, I think you'll do just fine. As a streaming source, it does a better job. Once the video plays, you don't really have any issues with it. If you have a lot of people coming to your house, you could set up one of these as your guest PC, just give them a monitor and a wireless keyboard and you know, they don't have to go on your computer. There's not much else to say at this point. You should have a good idea of what it can and cannot do. If you want more information, I'll have a link to it in the description down below. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. I love you all very much and God bless.